So what we have here is the absolutely visually beautiful <laughs> Sanguinaria canadensis. Sanguinaria canadensis, also known as the blood root. So the blood root is in the uh, poppy family, the uh, Papyravaceae, the Papyravaceae family. Um, and one thing to note uh, about this that that is very different than the, the most in the poppy families. And they, the, there's usually only four petals. There's only usually four petals. And as we can see here, there's a lot more than four petals. There's a lot more than four petals. There's usually five to nine, usually five to nine. But look at this one here. Let's scan over here if we don't dizzy up. There's one that I just found here that's hilarious. So this one has 10. This one has 10 petals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the most I've seen on these. Uh, but usually, you know, usually, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the average number is anymore. I used to say 8, but uh, I'm not sure. I think 8 is what I usually see. But um... So as blood root uh, emerges early in the season, it's one of our early spring ephemerals here in the Great Lakes region. Um, when, it, when it pops up early, it has its leaf. Its single leaf, uh, its single leaf is wrapped around the flower to prevent it from uh, frostbite, from to help it stay warm. You know, uh, so then the flowers pop up on the sunny days. Uh, so when it's nice and sunny, they open, and when it's when it's uh, the shadows start to fall, they close up. As we can see here, that there is a, a bunch of stamens, bunch of stamens uh, surrounding. See those kind of orange anthers there, surrounding that central that central pistil. That central pistil. The central part is the female reproductive parts, and the outside is the male reproductive parts. So what happens is you can see these, the first day or so of blooming, those stamens stay kind of tilted away from that central female structure. And the reason is, is they don't want to self-pollinate. They want to move their pollen outside of uh, away from that that uh, that pistol but then after a couple days if no pollinators show up you know it may uh, those those uh, those anthers start kind of weighing down into the middle and the stamens bend back down towards the middle and it self pollinates just to make sure just to make sure that it's it's uh, getting reproduced the flowers also have these two uh, long green sepals, but these sepals uh, more or less fall off before the uh, before it actually like just blooms. So then you know as as the the flowers are done, they uh, get the spindle shaped capsule fruit, which we'll look at in a second. Uh, but the leaves they unfurl, they open up. This is a small example, but they open up and. They really try to capture as much sun as they can before the canopy opens. And uh, they're gonna be these lobed, these lobed leaves. So it's a single leaf that arises and it'll be lobed. I think somewhere between four to eight, somewhere like that. I'm sure that there's more and less, but for the most part, that's kind of what we see. That's kind of what we see. And here you can see the, the spindle-shaped capsule starting to form. Start seeing the spindle-shaped capsule starting to form. There's a lot of adrenas um, flying around to pollinate these amongst other little bees. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look at this. This is just so beautiful. And oftentimes, so they have these underground rhizomes, these underground roots. And where they get the name blood root from, the common name blood root, is in those underground roots, uh, they, they have this, this red, bloody-looking latex that the Native Americans actually used in dye. Uh, if we break, I'm not going to do it here, but if we break one of these stems open, we can also see, we can also see that, that dye. We can also see that dye as well. Um, and uh, so Native Americans use it as a red dye to dye clothes. Uh, it's also used medicinally. There is toxins in it, so, you know, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, but anyway, this is a really cool plant. Also, one thing I didn't mention is the leaves are not hairy at all. They're actually a little glaucous. They're actually, let's go back to this leaf I was holding. They're actually, uh, they're actually a little glaucous. They're actually a little glaucous, on, especially on the underside. Uh, you can see that. And the stems, a little glaucous as well. Uh, the stems are hairless. And you get this really beautiful venation, this gorgeous venation uh, on that backside of the leaf. I mean, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just beautiful. 
So the name Sanguinaria, the etymology of the name is that actually comes from the, the word for blood. I think it's sanguine or san something like that, I forget. But it comes from the word from blood. Uh, and then Canadensis just means of Canada. So that's pretty easy. So another thing is that the seeds, uh, which I'll post a picture here of, have these eliosomes. These eliosomes are these fatty, like protein lipid like structures that are attached to the seeds. Um, and they're dispersed by ants. So when ants disperse the seeds, it's called myrmecochery, uh, myrmecochery, myrmecochery, something like that, myrmecochery. Uh, and uh, what they do is they take these seeds that have these eliosomes and uh, they bring them down into their, their nests, or into their, their ant holes. And what this does is it brings the seed into a more sterile environment so it's not going to be infected by, you know, a fungal or bacterial issues that kill the seed. So it's got a, it's literally planting in a, in a nice environment the seeds. So they have this really close evolutionary relationship with ants, which is pretty sweet if you ask me. You can see all these pollinators flying in, these true pollinators, these bees flying in. Uh, flies and bees are loving this. They, and the flowers, I mean, they're, they're kind of a nice, soft, scented flower. So if you ever get a chance to lay down and take a nice little smell of the flowers, uh, you should. You should do that. So habitat-wise, uh, it likes, you know, rich deciduous forests, um, slopes, ravines, uh, you know, nice, more natural wooded areas. You can see here, this is a sand, a mixed sand forest, a mixed sand forest with planted conifers, with planted uh, piceas. So it's distributed uh, throughout the Great Lakes region. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's pretty common throughout woodland systems in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois. I'm just gonna name all the Great Lakes states and there they are. And it goes all the way down into, uh, pretty much covers Eastern United States. Pretty much covers the Eastern United States. So it's got a very wide distribution. It's got a very wide distribution. Um, and it's just a great plant, just a lovely plant. So this is Sanguinaria, Sanguinaria canadensis. What a great plant.